Hello, good evening, guys. Good evening. I'm thinking you're saying good evening. Okay, so I'm gonna wait a second. We're still gonna wait like two minutes for your classmates and then we're gonna start right away. Okay, well, good evening. How are you doing today? Very good to be here. Just to learn a lot from you. Excellent, Manuel. Thank you. Welcome to the class. And I hope the other ones are doing fine as well. I'm a little bit, I don't know, I'm a little bit sick today. Like, not really sick, but I feel like headache. allergy. Were... What is it? No, headache? Yeah, oh, I have a headache. I mm -hmm. have had, yesterday I had a fever. Today is like... only a headache in, in my nose. It's, I have a runny nose and a sour throat. So eh, it's there, but it's nothing too complicated, like not to be in the class. I'm here and I'm gonna <laughs> teach the class as I always do. Okay, because that's what we do, right? We were right. born, we were born poor, but with the taste taste of a rich person. <laughs> okay, yep. So we're gonna start, and I thank you, and I appreciate that you're here. I know that Friday night last week was a little uh, bit yeah. was a little bit eight, off. Yeah, what is it? Eight days ago. Yeah, a few, eight days ago. Uh, plus, I hope they all can be here today. Yeah, and because I'm guessing and someone told me that the few Fridays that you had with the other teacher, those Fridays were off. So maybe that's why you got used to not having classes on Fridays, which is good, believe me. I would like it that to be like that too, but yeah, there's a schedule we have to meet and there's a time limit for every module. So we have to be here and I'm happy that you're here with me and I'm happy that you are compromised, like the term we looked for yesterday, that you're compromised to study English, not only, not only, um, study at like the platform and stuff like that, but the compromise to be here on time and to be here even though it's Friday and some of you might like to be in other places <laughs> or just sleeping because here in, in where I live, the weather is really cold today, like really, really cold. Today is really cold because it's, it was raining the whole day. So maybe that's why. Okay, I'm gonna go now because I already waited. Yeah, we have been waiting five minutes. So I'm gonna go with attendance now. I hope your classmates join the join this session later. I hope they are not in a party at a party right now <laughs> because I know as I Maybe. repeat, it's Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. Present. Blanca Stephanie Navarro Flores. David Samuel Caldames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Dora Elizabeth Flores Méndez. Erwin Lagos Andrade. Fátima Lourdes Gaitán Romero. Present. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Francisco Amadeo Villacorta Chávez. Fred Vladimir Cortés López. Harvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Kenia Esmeralda Galvez Ruiz. Uh, Madeline Yamilet Molina González. Present teacher. Manuel de Jesús Sánchez Hernández. I'm here. Marlon Stanley Ramírez Reyes. Thelma Clotilde Peña Martínez. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. 
Present. Jessica Yanari Cortés Díaz. Jocelyn Imelda Rivas Abarca. Thank you. Okay, good. Well, we're just a few students today. We're nine students. You are nine students today. So it was like last Friday. I was thinking like, I don't know if they're gonna connect to the class because I know it's Friday and on Friday sometimes they don't wanna connect to the class because last Friday I remembered that you didn't want to. But yeah, well, anyways, you're here. So I'm guessing okay. Fatima, I mean, Blanca Stephanie just connected, right? Yeah, teacher, sorry. Uh, I can't uh, connect before. I don't know why, but I have to put the, the number of the reunion and the number of the password. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it was manual this time. Yeah, I, I have to do it manual. Okay, okay, but glad but you're here. Teacher, I'm driving right now, but I'll, I almost get home. So I will disconnect and connect with my computer. It's okay. It's okay. Be safe. Okay. Drive safe. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. That's the most important thing. Many students have told me, teacher, I'm driving in this moment. I'm like, okay, I don't want to see you in the news. So please drive safe. I want you to get home safely. Okay. So welcome, and I appreciate, as I told you before, I do really appreciate that you're here because sometimes I'm like, ah, am I gonna be alone in the class? And I think now we're a little bit more than we were last Friday. I don't know how many you were on last Friday, but I'm happy that you're here today. Okay, so now we're gonna go here, and I'm, oh, I have to ask you, you are working on the platform, right? What unit or section are you in. Um, in my case, in the last one, for a point one. So for I guess uh -huh, I cannot access. There is any other high level. So I guess I finish. So, four point nine. Mm -hmm. so I could do like. Did you do like a? Final exam? No, not yet. But the but let me, let me, let me. I have been trying to do the any activities in the platform, but at the end I couldn't advance. Okay, let me let me share my screen. So you're telling me this one, four point nine, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. I finish all. Then you go next. Um, and then doesn't appear anything. Yes, the final exam. If you click, so you go here, previews. Mm -hmm. Well, let me, okay, so you're gonna be 4.9. Then you click here on next and nothing happens? Correct, nothing happened. But if I click here, look, I have the final mm -hmm. exam. But if in any case that doesn't work for you, you can go here to course and then it will be section one, two, three, four. And then here at the bottom, okay. you'll see uh -huh. final exam four questions. Okay. Then you click there and you'll have it. Sure, I'm going to work uh, on okay. the platform tomorrow. Okay, perfect, Manuel, perfect. Let's finish. Okay, good job. Okay, nobody else? Oh, ah, and also I have to ask, do you have any problems with the platform? Is there any exercise that is troubling you or that is difficult to you or you think is incorrect? Because sometimes there are some incorrect uh, answers there. So is there anything that I can help you with about the platform? Nope. You are too shy today. Is it because it's Friday? <laughs> You're on a Friday mood. Okay. And the teacher is sick. So I'm sorry about that. Because I know. Eh, I know. It's, it's kind of horrible to be like that in a class. Okay. We're going to go now. And we're going to do uh, the practice that I told you before about the new tongue twister, but this, tongue, this new tongue twister has actually a song. So you can practice it with a song. 
is the woodchuck song. It's, I cannot play it for you here because if I do, then YouTube is gonna, I don't know, YouTube always ban my videos if I play anything that is not, well, that has copyright. So I'm gonna send you the link of the song. Maybe you can play it in breaker rooms. But anyways, who here is on a computer right now? Fernando, okay. David, William, and Fatima. Okay, I'm gonna put some of you in the breaker room so you can help me with the song. You can share the song and you can share the sound. Okay, don't forget to share the sound. This one, Doris is also in a computer, okay. This one right here is the Woodchuck song. The, the song, I mean, the tongue twister that we're gonna be learning is Woodchuck. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? So that's not so complicated, but it can be complicated for some people for some reasons. I don't know why, but it's a little bit complicated for some people. Let me. Wait a second. Yeah, that. Thank you for sending it to the WhatsApp chat. Okay, let me, wait a sec. Okay, this is the one, I'm gonna share it with you. Okay. It's, a, you know, tongue twisters are always play of words. So how much would, would, now this is something that you need to know. Sometimes, like many times, there are words in English that we don't say the letter L. For example, when I say talk, I don't say I talk, I say talk. For example, walk, I don't say I walk. In the street, <laughs> I say I walk, okay? So in this case, it's the same. I don't say would, is would. Like these two words, they are pronounced almost the same. So how much would, would, how much would, but if you want to join it together, like the words in Spanish, you can join them, join them. So we can join these two and say, woulda. How much would, woulda, how much would, woulda, would chuck, chuck, effa, effa, and you can say this together as well. How much would, would a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood? Again, how much would, would a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could? And again, here you don't say the letter L, neither you say it here. Could chuck wood. And how? Much would would a would chuck chuck if a would chuck could chuck would how much would would a would chuck chuck if a would chuck could chuck would it's funny when I don't know, but it's very funny. When I do this that kinds of things and and my students are like, yeah, good job, teachers. You say it good. And when it's you, the ones that have to be practicing, not me. Well, I have to practice maybe, but not as much as you do because you're sorry. Fatima, do, do we have the same share? Do we have the same share? I, I don't know. I can see you. I can't see your share. Wait a second. I don't know. Let me see. It's with this. Mm -hmm. Like this uh, thing? Maybe. Yeah, I think it's the same. <laughs> yeah, we have the same share. Like that, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was looking at you and I was like, do we have the same one? Did you buy <laughs> did you buy it at EPA? 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> I did as well. <laughs> okay. Okay. I have that that kind of deficit that my memory, my my attention spans. So let's go back to the topic. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we're saying that how much would would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck would one more time how much it's not much don't say much right you already know that how much would would a would chuck chuck if a would chuck could chuck would and then you're gonna say it how much would would a would chuck chuck if a would chuck could chuck would how much would would a would chuck chuck if a would chuck could chuck would and if you say it with the rhythm of the song it's gonna be I think it's like how much would would a would chuck chuck if a would chuck could chuck would something like that it's fun to learn it with the song like some we will we will rock you and something like that I I, I don't know if it's the same rhythm but it's a little bit like that maybe mm -hmm. okay but if it helps you if it helps you that that's good okay um i'm gonna form the breaker rooms try to practice it but if you want to play the song you can play the song as well so it's gonna help you i don't know for me it's good to learn it with songs okay let me see so fatima is on a computer then Manuel, Manuel, you're not, no, no, you're not right. Uh, who else was? Fernando, right? Fernando's on a computer. And if I'm not mistaken, David, right? Okay, so I'm gonna put you guys in different <coughs> breaker rooms so you can share it. So Fernando is gonna be in one, David is gonna be in another one. Okay, and Fatima, it's gonna be in another one. Okay, you can share the screen. Please share it and share it with the song so you can get familiar with the song of it and then you practice a little bit. This one sometimes is difficult for some students, but I don't think it's gonna be your case. Good evening. Freddy, welcome to the class. So we're going to be practicing a new song twister. I'm going to send you to a breakout room where they are going to play a song, OK? OK. OK, perfect. Welcome to the class. Thank you. Harbin, can you join the breakout room? Harbin, you there? Harbin.
few minutes. No, you have, you don't have, you can't put the sun. No, because the teacher is in here and oh, the. Okay. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave. Bye bye. <laughs> okay. Okay, welcome back. So many times when I went to the breakout rooms, you were about to play the songs and I'm like, no, I'm here. Don't play it, please. Because they are going to ban the video. Teacher, I'm going to 
I'm going to disconnect and we'll connect with my computer. Okay, okay, that's good. Thank you for letting me know. Okay. 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 Perfect. So when I went to the breakout rooms, I was like, no, I don't play this song because I'm here and then I'm going to have to, I don't know, like cut the video or silent the video because, yeah, it's going to be, uh, I don't know, banned. It has happened to me so many times that uh, sometimes I just play videos that don't have any copyright and then they ban the video. So it's... Uh, it's complicated, so that's why I don't like it, something like that. Okay, perfect. I'm going to give you a challenge. The challenge is going to be to practice free. We have learned how many tongue twisters now. The ice cream, Betty Bat, she sells, and this one, how much wood? Okay, no, but I'm not going to give you the challenge yet. So the challenge is going to be just to practice the one that we practice right now. And on Monday, we're gonna see how you're doing. But please guys, try, try to practice on Saturday, like try to practice on Sunday, try to practice at least four minutes, two minutes if you don't have enough time. Just try to practice a little bit, okay? It's gonna help you with your pronunciation. But I'm gonna ask you, how do you feel the tongue twister? Do you think it's difficult? A little. Yeah, a little. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yes, I mean, I just a little. Practice. Okay. Just practicing okay. is going to be easy. Like she sells, she sells by the seashore. Yes. Yeah, like that, that one. Yeah, you mm. have to practice. Just memorize. And exactly. And they go, well, not memorize it because I can memorize it without saying it. Just say it, right? Like you need to say it. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's going to be easy by like when you have practice already. Okay, perfect. Now, we're going to do a reading activity and we're going to do, we're going to play a video. So you're also going to play a video in the breakout rooms. But this activity, it's going to be about a story. Well, it's, it's, it's history actually, but it's a story. Do you know who Cornell Sander is? Colner, Colnell Sander. Yes, Fatima says yes. He's Kentucky. He's Kentucky, Kentucky chicken, right? Kentucky fried chicken. So it does KFC. Yes. So we're going to talk a little bit about him. I don't know if you know his, his, his story already. Do you know his story already? The true not teacher. The true story? No. Well, but there, I think there's only I, one I know. story. I never hear the story. Okay, so we're gonna know a little bit more about the story right now. And we're gonna do both a reading and a video. Let me share both things right now with you. This is a reading comprehension exercise. Let me go here. And you're also gonna have verbs in the past. Remember that we were practicing the verbs in the past because you have some, you had some troubles with the verbs in the past with the pronunciation of EDs at the end, for example, worked, learned. So I wanted to practice those things right now with this uh, reading comprehension that we're gonna do. And I will send you a video that you can also watch that is gonna help you know a little bit more about the true story up behind Kentucky Man. Okay, so the reading activity, it's this one. So you have here, the man behind KFC. So this was the Colonel Sanders, Corland Sanders. This was him. So here, you're gonna read it, okay? You're gonna read the whole story, like not the whole story, but like the summary of the story. It's a, it's a really interesting story. I like it. I like it really much. Now, by the end of this, you're going to have a couple of questions. And you have to answer the questions according to the story. Then you have to watch the video, which is this one. Okay, you're going to watch the video. And when you have watched the video and you have answered the 
the questions, just try to practice reading. Once you have practiced reading, you have answered the questions and you have played the video, we're gonna come back here and I'm gonna ask you some questions about the story of Goldman Sanders. Maybe open questions or just yes and no questions, but you're gonna be ready to answer them because you're gonna study right now that topic. Is that clear? Yes. Yeah, it's clear. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. You have both both uh, links. I send them right here, and I'm gonna enable the sharing. Okay. So remember, this is a reading comprehension practice. Read it, answer the questions, but together as a group. Not not it's not individual thing. It's together as a group. And when you finish, practice reading the story. And remember the tips that I gave you to pronounce or to say the words in the past with the ED sounds, okay? So that's what I want you to do. Reading comprehension and practice the pronunciations. And also watch the video that is gonna be like ex some extra information about Colonel Sanders. Yes? Excellent. Let's okay. get to work. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Oh, again, uh, 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 uh. wait a sec. Okay, so the people who have computers right now are, so Fatima needs to be in one, Fernando needs to be in another one, and No, this is gonna change here. Okay. Okay, let's go. Fernando, Fatima, and David are in different break room so you can share the video. Okay, let's go. Let's get to work.
Erwin. I am here. Excellent. I had a problem. My, no, I had, I had, a, I had to work on Friday. It's a special day in my work. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you have, oh. but you, you are available now? Yes, yes. I am, I am ready at the moment. Okay. So your classmates are in the breakout rooms. They are practice. No, they are doing a story about Colonel Sanders, the founder of KFC. Yes, I, I saw it in the in the in the WhatsApp at the moment. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna send you to a breakout room so you can help your classmates and also when they finish they're gonna do a reading activity. Okay. Okay, thank you, teacher. Perfect. There you go.
Hello. So every time when I have to go to a break or room, the situation is sometimes, well, sometimes, yes, yeah, sometimes, you are like not speaking anymore and I'm wondering. So you have practiced the pronunciation 100%. If I ask you to pronounce or to say any word, you're gonna be like, yeah, I can say it. I know how to say it and stuff like that. Because you are silent sometimes when I go there. And I don't like to hear that silence because I want you to be practicing, speaking about it, sharing your thoughts. Remember, I don't do these activities just because. I do these activities with the purpose that you share your thoughts, that you think in English, that you speak in English, that you express yourself in English. This is your time not only to read, but to share your thoughts in English. Every time we're here, you're many students, so you cannot be speaking at the same time. So I speak. Every time I send you to the breakout rooms is your time to speak. Your time, or my time, when I get there and I don't see you practicing or I don't hear you practicing, and you're like, no teacher, we already did it, we finished. Yeah, maybe you did, maybe you finished, but you also, <laughs> You also have to practice as much as you can. Share your thoughts. What do you think about KFC? What do you think about the story? Is that inspirational to you? Is, do you think that's possible? Do you think a person can live a life um, just being an employee and by the time this person retires, he or she builds an entire company and then lives the rest of his, of his life in a different way, wondering if he was gonna kill himself or not. Yeah, so you can, there's a lot to speak about the story. That's why I shared that story with you because I thought you were gonna speak and you were gonna say, hey, yeah, this is really inspirational. Actually, I shared that story with some basic four students and they had a lot to say about it. They were really touched by the story. So. Let's go here. I'm going to go with attendance and then we're going to share our thoughts, which I thought you were doing in the break rooms, but you know, I'm not. So I'm going to share. Wait a second. Because I hear typing. I'm going to mute you guys because I hear a lot of typing. Okay. Let's go. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. Present. Blanca Stephanie Navarro Flores. Present. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present. Dora Elizabeth Flores Méndez. Present. Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present. Er, uh, yeah. Fátima Lourdes Gaitán Romero. Present. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Francisco Amadeo Villacorta Chávez. Present. Freddy Vladimir Cortez Lopez. Freddy disconnected again, right? But he was here. Okay, Harbin Isaac Guevara Miranda. I see Harbin there connected, but he's not there. Ken Esmeralda Galvez Ruiz. Madeline Jamilet Molina Gonzalez. Present. Manuel de Jesús Sánchez Hernández. Present. Marlon Stanley Ramírez Reyes. Telma Clotilde Peña Martínez. Present. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Present. Jessica Yanari Cortés Díaz. And Jocelyn Imelda Rivas Abarca. Present. Perfect. We are only missing, well, we're missing like a couple of. So next week, we're gonna have the full week of classes. Then the next week after that, we're gonna have only Monday and Tuesday. So basically after we finish this class, we only have more, 
well, let's see, seven classes to go. And then we're gonna finish advance one and you're gonna go to advance two. Do you know how many advanced levels do you have? I feel there are six. Yeah, they, they are six as the basic intermediate advanced. So you have six levels. You're gonna finish one and you're only, only gonna have five more to go. And that's gonna be it. So I again encourage you, don't drop right now. Don't drop the course right now. Don't leave right now and take guys as much, like take the times that you have to practice as much as you can. Because when I send you to the breakout rooms again, it's your time to shine. It's your time to speak, speak, just speak, speak, speak. That's the purpose of the activities. Okay, now we're gonna do the same reading. Oh, I'm sorry. Freddy is Vladimir Cortez Lopez. I already go, went to the, through the attendance, Freddy. Yeah, I'm sorry, I have really bad connection. Okay, so, but I'm gonna write your attendance. Okay, so now we're gonna do uh, some reading activities and I'm gonna ask you some questions about it. Oh, hey, did you watch the video? Yes, teacher. Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes, yes. And remember, I'm asking you again, I'm telling you again, it's not only about reading, answering, watching the video, and that's it. It's not about that. Why do you think about it? You wanna read it again? Okay, this pronunciation is not like that. I'm gonna help you. It, group work is there because of that, because we need to practice. Okay, I'm gonna read it for you once, and then we're gonna see how you read it. It says, remember, not reading like you are first graders. Reading like actually reading. The man behind KFC, Harlan Sanders, was born in the USA in 1890, but his childhood wasn't as happy, wasn't a happy one. His father died when he was only six. His mother didn't have much money, so she needed to find, so she needed to find a job. She went to work at a shirt in a shirt factory, and Harlan stayed at home to look after his younger brother and sister. That was when he first learned to cook. He left home when he was 12 and worked on a nearby farm. After that, he had a lot of different jobs. And in 1930, he became the manager of a service station in Carbin, Kentucky. He started cooking meals for hungry travelers who stopped at the service station. And soon, people came only for the food. Harlan couldn't serve anybody, couldn't serve everybody because the place was too small. So he decided to move to a 142 seat restaurant across the street where he could serve all his customers. Over the next nine years, he developed the secret chicken recipe that made him famous. The first official Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant didn't open until August, 1952. And by 1964, there were more than 600 KFCs in North America. That year, Sanders sold the company for $2 million, but he continued to work as KFC's public spokesman and visited restaurants all over the world. He traveled 250 thousand miles every year until he died in 1980, age 90. Six years later, PepsiCo bought KFC for $840 million. There are now KFC restaurants in more than 110 countries around the world. And KFC has 12 million customers every day, but the recipe is still a secret. Okay, this is a very interesting story. And uh, behind this story, there's a story that you get, like the one that you watch on YouTube. 
about how, how he was not a businessman. He was an employee his whole life. By the end of his career, washing dishes and stuff like that, I believe, he started to be a businessman. And he created an empire, if you want to call it like that. Do you like KFC chicken? Yes. I have tasted it before, but I don't like it. Yeah, me neither. I don't like I it. I don't but like it too. Yeah, many people like it, but the thing is that it's not cooked with oil. It's cooked with, I don't know what is the name of this. It's cooked like with, I don't know, it's something different, something white. Like it's not oil. It's not oil. It's like butter, something butter like that. Yeah. So we're going to read it and we're going to do a reading practice. Okay. I'm going to start with one person, then I'm going to stop and then I'm going to ask another person to continue reading. Okay. So the first person that I'm going to go with is. Oh, and I'm going to be correcting your pronunciations this time. I'm going to be marking when you, where you make mistakes. The only thing is that you're not going to see it until the end of your reading. Then I'm going to correct the pronunciation. Okay, let's start with... Wait, wait. Uh, Andres Giovanni. Okay, Andres Giovanni is not there. Jocelyn. Sorry, teacher. Uh, it is raining a lot. So I have problems. But can you read it? Okay. Okay, Good read morning. until the number six, where it said six. Yes. Okay. Harlan Sanders was born in the USA in 1890, but his childhood wasn't a happy one. His father died when he was only six. Can you repeat his father what? His father died. Okay, perfect. Good job. That's a good okay. pronunciation. Okay, let's continue with Jocelyn now that I told you Jocelyn, okay? You have to okay. do it now. Wait, wait, wait a second. What was it? Where was I? Okay, only six. Okay, there. When he says his mother, and then you're gonna finish when it says sister. Okay, his mother didn't have much money, so she needed to find a job. She went to work in a chair factory and Harlan stayed at home to look after his younger brother and sister. Good job, excellent, excellent pronunciation. Then from that, Younger brother and sister, that was until farm, please, Madeline. That was until the word farm. Uh, that was when he first learned, learned to cook. He left home when he was 12 and worked on a nervy farm. Okay, thank you very much. Let's just correct these two pronunciations. The first one is learned, okay, with the at the end, learned. Learned, and then nearby, nearby. Nearby and learned. Exactly. So when you, for example, use Google Maps and you go to nearby gas stations, nearby, many things, you can go to nearby. So this is near and this is by, nearby. And that's how would you read it. Okay, let's continue now with, let's see, da, 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 when he was still near part five. After, from here till Kentucky. After, and then finish on Kentucky. Doris, please. After that, he had a lot of different jobs in, in 90, 30, 
he became the manager of service station in Corbin, Kentucky. Okay, good pronunciation, maybe just a little bit stuffed, but here, can you repeat this number, please, Doris? It's uh, 1930. 19, 1930. 19, uh, 1930. That, I, I'm, I always ask my, student, ask my students to do the 19, because if you don't say it like that, it gets confused with 90, okay? So you need to be really strong in the team, 1930, like that. Perfect. Let's continue then. So, Kirby, Kentucky. Oh, wait a second. Okay, since he till food, he and food. Blanca Stephanie. Okay. Sorry. He start cooking, right? Yeah. Okay. He start cooking meals for hungry travelers who stop at the service station and some people came only for the food. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Thank you. There. Oh, I'm sorry. Today I didn't. Right now I didn't. Okay. It's started. Okay. Started. Remember when it ends with a T or a D? It's started, starter. So, and here you say a D, service station. And when we have a consonant, this is at the service station, at the service station. If we have vowel, it's D. Okay. Or if we want to emphasize in, the, in that, like D, Colner Sanders. And you wanna talk about something like a great, in a great way. Okay, thank you very much. Mm. Okay. Only for the food. Harlan from Harlan until customers. Francisco from Harlan until customers. Okay, I tried. Harlan couldn't 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 serve every, everybody because the place was too small. So. He decided he decide to move to uh, 100, yeah, 142. Sit restaurant across the street where the cool, cool servers, server are still customer. Or his customer. Okay. Let's check on pronunciation. Okay, Harlan couldn't serve it really quick. A small is incorrect. A small, no, small, small. small. Just do small. the S sound, small. And here small. we have another one that actually ends with an E and E, but the pronunciation doesn't help if you do side. It's decided as the other one, decided. This is decided. So he decided to move. There, this word is not restaurant. It's like resto, to, restaurant. Restaurant. Okay? Restaurant. And then here you say da. I don't know why do you say where the could and he, or he could. Okay. Serve. You say server and it's serve. So. And this word you say customers. And actually, this word is one of the complicated ones in English. Because even though it's written customers, it's read customers. If customer. Customers. Customers uh, is the correct one. Oh, yeah, exactly. Even though it's customers, you read it as customers. Okay, perfect. Now let's continue from customers until... Yeah, until the period right here, famous. It's gonna be a short one. Fatima, help me. Over the next nine years, he developed the secret chicken recipe that made him famous. Perfect, thank you very much. Now from the first official Kentucky Fried until America. Edwin. 
Okay. The first official Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant didn't open until August 1952. And by 1964, there were more than 600 key FS in North America. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm just gonna correct here real quick. This is first is incorrect. First is the correct pronunciation. First, okay. Then the month is not read August, it's August, like with O, August. And here I, I'm, I'm guessing you got a little bit nervous or, or, or you messed up with the words in, in Spanish because you say KFS, K, K, KFS, and it's KFC, okay? KFC, just like that. Okay, let's go now with, Let's see, from North America until world, David, help me there. That year, Sanders sold the company for $2 million, but he continued to work as KFC's public, spoke, public spokesman and visited restaurants all over the world. Thank you very much. Good job. Just here. Public. It's not public, it's public. Oh. And oh, then it's thanks. here is visited. Visited. V. Remember the V sound? Public. Visited. 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 Okay. Excellent. Thank visited you very much. Public. Let's continue from where he until million. He until million. Let's see. Freddy's. Help me out, okay? You're gonna read from he until million. From where? Where it says he, where David stopped. Mm -hmm. And then until million. Where it says, but he. Mm -hmm. Okay. But he continued to work as- No, 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 no. Like where David, did, did you see where David stopped? Nope. Next to word. Next to word. Word. Restaurants uh, all over the world. Ah, okay. So he will be from. He traveled it. Exactly. Okay. He traveled it two hundred fifty thousand miles every year until he died in nineteen eighties. Age ninety six years later, Mexico bought. KFC for 840 millions. Perfect, good job. Only this one is not traveled, it's traveled. Yeah. Traveled yeah. with the D sound, traveled. Yeah. Traveled. And then this is until. Until. Do you know what is the meaning of until? Hasta. Exactly, thank you very much. Now let's go from this last part right here. And the person who's gonna read the last part is gonna be, let me see the people with the cameras off. No, but this one's already went, this one went, this one went. Ah, okay, the people with the cameras off are already did it. William, help me. There are more KFC restaurants in more than 110 countries around the world, and KFC has 12 million customers every day, but the recipe is still a secret. Thank you very much. I'm guessing, William, you got confused with more and now because you say there are more KFCs and there is there are now KFCs. I'm a sleepy teacher, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, it's okay, don't worry, don't worry. I know you're sleepy, we are all sleepy. Teacher, okay. a question? Yeah. At the, at, the, at the end of the paragraph, you can put it again. Mm -hmm. At the end of the paragraph, mm -hmm. uh, the, the document says round. Is correct or it may be, need to be around? It's a short version of around and it's also correct. Ah, okay. Like, but it's meaning around. 
Yeah, around, around. Yes. Like for example, okay. if I said here, till, because I can till, say only yes. till on, instead I, of until. I hear that, till, yes, I hear that. It, it's like to cause from because. Like so because cause. and cause, exactly. Yes, okay, thank you. Remember teacher. English? I don't know, people in the United States, they like to short every word they know. So they like to short them. And, and when you speak to a native English speaker, they're going to be like, rrr, 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 so like they are praying or doing something and they do, rrr, 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 rrr. they speak like that. And sometimes they use the shorter version of everything that they can use. So for example, now, even more now that with the Gen Z, the Gen Z is really lazy to speak. You know, this, they, they make short acronyms for everything. For example, yes. if you use TikTok, <laughs> they're gonna use POV. So POV, you're in an English class. Like point of view, have you ever heard POV? P-O-V? Yeah. Exactly, it's point of view, you're in an English class. Or they use CC if they want to send something to someone, they use CC. Like the ones that you use in the emails when you do the CC. So I send this to someone and then CC to another person. So yes, I don't know, the, 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 millenn the, the millennials, no. It's the Gen Z. They use acronyms for everything, for everything. And for my, in my case, I remember we only use LOL or LMFO. Yeah or something like that, that, that those words or, or acronyms, but the Gen Z, they use a lot of them. They a are a lot, yeah, you're right. Exactly. I don't understand almost the majority of, the, of that acronyms. <laughs> exactly, most of those acronyms are, I don't know, <laughs> I feel really old because when I see a new one, I go to Urban Dictionary and I look, what is this? And, and it tells me, and it gives me examples. Have you used, have you ever used your uh, urban dictionary? Urban dictionary, urban, urban? This yes, is, I already use it. Yeah, urban dictionary is something that is going to help you with slangs. Do you know what is slang? Yes, so, something like modis, but by the street modis. Exactly. So if you go here, look, this is urban dictionary urban dictionary urban, urban so if you dictionary. for example okay. write pov look pov is there pov. from my pov it looks great so point of view actually this will be more like from my perspective perspective mm -hmm. point of view so they don't yes. say perspective neither they say uh, point of view they say my pov Bob, and that's how they use it. So you're going to see that uh, they short the words and they create and they make up new words every time. I don't know. It's weird. So we have to get used to those things. And Urban Dictionary is going to be your friend when we get old, because now I feel old having to look on the Urban Dictionary to look to know the meanings. I, I feel old. OK, anyways, let's go and. For example, that word that we say a lot, okay. Yes. That's that's an, that's a short acronym to something. That's military code. And we use it. So yeah. it, it's also like the word am I supposed Hero to say? Kills. Yeah, but have you well, I'm just gonna say it, you're adults already. But the word fuck. You know what? Of course I know it. <laughs> you know what it means? Of course I did. Do you know the origin of the word? Mm. That's, I don't know it. You don't know that? Does someone here knows the origin of the word? You don't? No. Ah, okay. Let me tell you something. So, <laughs> English is interesting. English is an interesting language, like Spanish. So, long, long, long time ago, when they're the, well, actually, I think this was in England. When people got married, 
a long, long time ago. They needed the permission of the king to do what couples do in the night of the wedding. So they needed a permission. So to request that permission, they will go to the kingdom and the king, because they, I don't know, there was prostitution. So people will speculate and say things. So just to make it legal, you see, this was, like, if you do, do it and you were not married, that was illegal. So to make it legal, the king will write a sign. Well, a person will do it for him, but it will be the permission. And the permission will say F-U-C-K. And that was the meaning of fornication under the consent of the king. So that's how the word, <laughs> exactly. That's how the word became popular and say, oh, so they are king because they are in fornication under the consent of the king. Exactly. That's how the, the word became That's popular. Interesting. Yeah. When I went to college, uh, they there was a, a subject that is called all English and origins. So you see how the English has been changing through time. And now it's changing even more. So this is not something new, but it's all, something that the new generation is doing a lot, right? Like doing those acronyms. Okay. Let's continue. That was just an interesting story to tell you. I, I thought you knew, but you didn't. So I told you. Don't don't be like, hey, in the class the teacher is telling us bad words. No, I'm just in, giving you information. I'm telling you about history. Okay, this is history. <laughs> okay. Information. Yeah, there's new information in this. Well, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now you're gonna go like, hey, do you know that the word <laughs> now you have something to tell your, your co-workers of someone? Okay, guys, we're gonna go here uh on to the 29th, the page 29th. Okay. And here we have a topic that is how to avoid run-on sentences. Okay, run-on sentences are those sentences that if you don't place a comma or a period on it, it's gonna sound with thousands. So it doesn't, it, it's not gonna make sense. So to make sense, you have to add the commas, but you need to know where to add the commas. It says, look at the examples in the box that complete the exercise below. Now, use a comma before coordinating conjunctions that joins two independent clause. I don't know why this word is here. Use comma before coordinating conjunctions that joins two independent clauses. So if I'm joining one independent clause and a dependent clause, so I'm not gonna use a comma with the conjunction because I'm joining the two ideas. But if I am gonna join two independent clauses, I'm gonna use a comma. For example, the gap generation put This is incorrect. It needs to be puts with S. The gap generation puts many people, many employees at a disadvantage, you see, but newer and experienced employees are supporting each other. What it means to have two independent classes that this one without this one makes sense. I don't need this one, okay? Newer and experienced employees are supporting each other. I know the meaning, it's clear to me even if I don't have the first sentence. So this, I'm gonna join two independent clauses, so two independent ideas with a comma if I have a conjunction, like but. So the gap generation puts many employees at a disadvantage. This is a, an individual idea. But then I join, and jo I join it with another idea, but newer and experienced employees are supporting each other. Now, when two independent classes are put together without a comma, 
plus a coordinating conjunction. So you need a comma and then a coordinating conjunction. The result is a run-on sentence. Run-on sentences cause our message to be difficult to read by our audience. Remember guys that punctuation is very important, very important in English as it is in Spanish. I don't know if you have ever read those texts that some people send and they don't have any commas, they don't have any periods, periods, I mean periods, they are just a full text. And you're like, where it begins, where it ends, I don't know, I don't get it. So punctuation is gonna help you to understand the meaning of it. So the gap generation puts many employees at a disadvantage, comma, new idea now, but newer and experienced employees are supporting each other. Run on, this is a, an, uh, an example of a run, run on sentence. I read the research about the generation gap. It is very interesting. So here we have two sentences. The first one is, I read, I'm sorry, it's in the past. I read the research about the new generation gap. Here we have another sentence, you see? And it's very interesting. I'm gonna use a comma and I'm gonna use a conjunction to join the two independent clauses. If I don't do it like this, it sounds, I don't know, weird. And it's and it, if you see it, it's weird. I read the research about generation gap. It is very interesting. I don't even do a pause because let me do. I don't even do a pause. I'm just like, I read the generation, I mean, I read the research about your generation gap. It is very interesting. Does it make sense? Or it does it make sense to you? Here in this part, no, I need to separate it. And as you see here in the second example, and it's very interesting. That's what I need to do. Let's go here. We have the, these are the connections that we can use. They are, for and nor but or yet so. You know how to use this already. So we're gonna go, if you have the manual, it's on page 29. So let's place them. For example, one of the most common management challenge involves how to effectively manage all kinds of different people. One of the most common managing challenges, this is just one sentence, involves is the verb, involves how to effectively manage all kinds of different people. This one doesn't need one. Some managers and employees in general don't like the behavior of younger generation leaders must learn to promote a good environment among their employees. So here, of younger generation. Leaders, you see, you see, this is, this is the problem. <laughs> so some managers and employees in general don't like behavior of younger generations. So here we have a statement. This is one. Then the other one starts at leaders must learn to promote a good environment among their employees. So we will need a comma. Wait, we'll need a comma here. And then we're gonna use a conjunction. What of these conjunctions you think is the appropriate one for that? For, and, nor, but, or yet so. I think it's so, I don't know about you, but I think it's so leaders must learn to promote a good environment among their employees. Or and teacher, and. And leaders must learn to promote. But and will be if it is joining or yes. according to this. In, 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 in not. In this case, is some because managers don't like don't like the behavior. Correct, correct. Don't like the behavior. So, what do they have to do? So, yes. leaders must learn yes, to promote yes. the You're right. So, yes, exactly. So here is so we're not going to use that anymore. 
So you only have one, two, three, four, five, and six to go. Okay, is the activity clear for you guys? Yep. I have a question. Uh -huh. In that case, but it, it didn't work to join. No, because but will be a comparison between two things. So some managers and employees in general don't like the behavior of younger generations, but leaders most learn. Yeah, in a sense, it does make sense, in a sense, but leaders more, must learn to promote a good environment among their employees. But I'm giving you a reason. So if this doesn't work, so you have to do this. Actually, okay. it is the way it sounds better, Fatima, but I'm guessing that you're gonna find here down here, a better place for but. And then you're gonna be like, yeah, but I use it here. You got it? Yeah, thank okay. you. Perfect. I think it's on page, yeah, there. It's on page 29, if you have the manual, okay? This is the last activity we're gonna do. And let's get to work on it really quick. Let's go. Blanca.
generation C and don't how to say you so I'll change welcome generation Y often you change more so much more for them to bet. Hello, I didn't realize the time. So we're gonna go with attendance just to see if no one has connected. So Kenya is not here, right? Marlon is not here and Janari is not here. All the other ones are here. Okay, guys, that will be it for today. Uh, we didn't finish the activity. We're going to finish it on Monday. So I hope you have a great weekend and you have the time to practice a little bit more about the tongue twisters, okay? And work on the platform. Okay. okay. Good night. Perfect. Good night. Have a good Bye. night. Bye. Have a great weekend. Bye. See you Monday. Take care. You too. Take care. Bye-bye.